We just got done seeing the server meshing update and dog. I think it's safe to say that Intrepid has gone beyond what any of us could have imagined. Before you attack me, Star Citizen, Guild Wars 2, I understand some of these things that Ashes is working on have already been in the space, but they also created a brand new system. And on top of that, we got a ton of Alpha 2 news today. So let's get into it. All right, so let me start off by saying that if server meshing is something you wanted to know more about or are still confused about, I highly recommend just watching the stream by Intrepid. I'm going to do my best to give you the breakdown in the way that I understand it, but even if you watch this video, I would still say go and watch their video. The live stream started off with Intrepid talking about the requirements. And this was boiled down to essentially what you would expect from any MMO, a high number of players that are playing smoothly. Since Ashes of Creation is going to have tons of PVP, we're going to need that even more here because we have events such as Node Wars and Sieges. Now, they are able to use the replication system, but in short, it wouldn't work simply because the system would become overwhelmed. So Intrepid came up with their own solution and that is IntrepidNet. IntrepidNet is a fully distributed networking stack tailor-made for Ashes of Creation and built-in house. These dudes came up with their own solution, which is IntrepidNet, but it gets way deeper than this. Let's continue. IntrepidNet consists of the following technologies, server meshing, inner server replication, microservices, dynamic gridding, and replication graph. Let's break each of these down. All right, two things. One, with Unreal Engine, an actor is an entity within the world. NPC, mount, tent, or cargo, it's something you can visually see and represent. Now, these actors are able to be duplicated. The second thing is replication. This is the process of synchronizing the state of actors on the server between the game clients. The way I understand this in this example is, player one starts out not swimming, which is why the animation shows for all three players that player one isn't swimming. As this character moves into the water, the text on screen changes to recognize player one as swimming. What this means is that the server knows that player one is swimming, so it then sends that information out to the other players, which again makes the swimming action true. And now the action that player one is going through will be sent to players two and three to see. Now think of every moving part in an MMO and apply what we just spoke about. That's a lot of work. Now it's time to move on to server meshing. In Unreal Engine, your game usually works on a single server, but this won't work for Ashes of Creation because it's simply way too big. So their solution to this was to modify Unreal Engine to make several servers that make up the game realm. Each server here pretty much has its own jurisdiction on what it controls in the realm. Now, since the realm is divided into several servers, they no longer need to worry about replicating an entire world. How does this work with seeing other players that are on other servers though? So when players come across the invisible line, in the world, a proxy is created. All a proxy is, is essentially a copy of you that's not the real you. In their words, it is an always up-to-date copy that does not carry a player connection. You are now probably thinking, okay, if I see someone on another server and I decide to attack them or attack their proxy, what then happens? Well, we actually can't directly do damage to a proxy, so Intrepid had to come up with another solution for that, and that is a cross-server event. A cross-server event changes data on the proxy's owner, not the proxy itself, which then allows us to do PvP and interact with players across server boundaries. Dog, by the time we're done breaking this down, we're all going to be working at Intrepid. My head was literally hurting as I was watching the stream. The last part of server meshing talked about seamless transfers. This converts the proxy actor to an authority actor and emotes the original actor down to a regular proxy. Moving on to inter-server replication. 
Actions take place on a server that sends the information to the replicator, which then sends the information to the client. From this graphic here, this is an issue because there would be a limit on the replicator, causing a bad gaming experience for those involved if there is too much going on on that server. Here though, since there isn't just one replicator for the entire realm, remember how we spoke earlier about how Ashes of Creation has broken down the realm, being Ashes of Creation into several servers? Each server is now responsible for their own replication, which eases up the stress. The main point that you want to take from this is that there isn't a single point of failure that will take down the entire realm if it crashes. All this means is, is if someone is doing something that's causing them to lag, but you're super far away from them, you're not going to catch that lag because you'll both be on two different servers. Now things probably can still go wrong, but it's not going to be like, oh, some guild is coming through and now everyone has crashed. No, it'll be the people on that specific server that are dealing with that while everyone else is going on with their day. That's amazing. How many times have you been kicked from a game only to ruin your night? This system will reduce that from happening. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it will reduce it. Microservices are the next topic, and it probably was my favorite topic throughout the entire stream. So we know that servers that are right next to each other can share and send information to each other. Cool, got it. But what about servers that are across the map from each other? How are they gonna get that information to each other? Think of microservices like a cloud system that have their hand in everything. These microservices allow us to do centralized interactions such as party and guild chat where players can be anywhere in the world but still need to be able to send and receive messages. This applies to node service, guild service, mail service, artisanship service, and social service such as chat and parties. With this, Intrepid can keep track of everything in the world, literally everything, moving around, collecting materials, dying, everything. Dynamic greeting was the community favorite in this showcase, and for good reason. If you're confused, prepare to be confused even more. We talked about the realm being the entire game and the several servers that we'll all play on within that realm. Sieges are going to be a fundamental piece of content for Ashes of Creation. So what happens when too many players gather onto one server? In the case of a 250v250, let's say that that server is struggling. So what dynamic gridding is going to do is it's going to create smaller servers within that server on the fly for those 500 players. This is literally wild. Something like this can literally change the trajectory of future MMOs and can solve a lot of issues that we've seen in the past. This is supposed to be ready at the start of Alpha 2. The last subject was the replication graph, and this confused me the most, but in simple terms, Intrepid wanted to make our experience smoother and faster. There are zones that do relevancy checks, but in the interest of performance, they've created a grid which allows certain cells within said grid to do relevancy checks. This improved things for them, but they wanted to do even better. So the actors that we would interact with would be placed on that grid, but only when we interact with them. But if they aren't being interacted with, then they will remove themselves from the grid. This improves replication times by five times. This still wasn't good enough for Intrepid because in high intensity PVP battles between hundreds of players, this could still overwhelm the server. Back in that 250v250, something of that magnitude isn't something Unreal Replication is built to handle. So what did Intrepid do? Dog, they multi-threaded Unreal Replication. Mind you, Unreal Engine is a very single-threaded engine and Replication is one of the most single-threaded systems it has. It wasn't easy making this multi-threaded, but they were able to accomplish it. And as far as we know, no one else has done this before. So to make it even easier to understand, they created something in Unreal Engine that has never existed before, but it's helping the game run much smoother. I've said this before, and I'm gonna keep saying it. I really believe that Ashes of Creation is going to change the way that we look at gaming and especially MMOs. Think what Baldur's Gate 3 did, but even bigger, right? They're literally paving the way for future MMOs. When you look at the people working on this game, it's really hard not to believe that they aren't supervillains from Gotham. 
Dude, it's a ton of like evil geniuses working on this game. So please give them all of the love and recognition that they deserve. I wanna say thank you to Hunter, Alex, Kevin, Andrew, Antoine, Adam, Ish, and Doug. Seriously, the community appreciates you and we are nothing without you. And we got a ton of information today too, man. And it was just insane. So we know that Alpha 1 testers are gonna be getting in as early as this month. Next month's live stream is gonna be the Bard, finally. I'm probably gonna do something special for that. So stay tuned. Alpha 2 keys are coming back. So if you missed your chance to get it, they'll still be doing giveaways, but there is going to be a chance to buy them again. And then the craziest part is next month, we should be getting an Alpha 2 release date. I mean, it only makes sense that it's happening with the Bard Showcase because it's the best class. It's finally time, y'all. But what does y'all think about the server meshing update? Please let your boy know in the comment section below. Also, my guild memorandum is still recruiting, so the guild link is in the description. Get on in there and apply. If you haven't created an Ashes of Creation account yet, feel free to use my link in the description. If you're looking for a community Discord to come kick it in, come chill with us, man. If you want to stay up to date with me, feel free to follow me on X and Twitch, where I stream every Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I also stream the live monthly updates. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.